Hello and welcome to my new YouTube series, Well Da, where I teach music production techniques aimed towards the classical musician. These lessons are great for the classical musician who is new to a digital audio workshop or DAW and wants to be able to help enhance the quality of their home recordings. So in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you about EQ and how EQ can be a helpful tool to clean up the quality and the sound of our recordings. So I've already gone ahead and recorded an excerpt. Horn players will recognize this as the opening of Ein Heldenleben by Britney Spears. <laughs> All right, so it's a pretty good recording. You can see here, and if you have headphones on, you can tell that I recorded it in stereo. So I like to use two ribbon mics. This one down here is the ribbon mic that's right by my bell. And this one up here is the ribbon mic that's right above me, which helps get a bit more of that from away sound that the horn needs to have. Now, EQ is something that I can add to help clean up the recording a little bit. So here is our EQ tool. You can find it in this panel. If you can't see this panel in your DAW, you can get it by pressing Control I or this information button up here. Now let's have a look. So we have a horizontal axis here. And on this axis, we have numbers that represent frequencies in Hertz. So if I move this dot to right here, you can see down here, this dot is, ex is exactly at 430 Hertz, which we all know is the standard orchestral tuning pitch. Now on this side, you can see it goes all the way up to 20,000 Hertz and all the way down to 20 hertz. Human ears can't hear above 20,000 and can't hear below 20. In fact, most human ears can't really even hear, but have a hard time hearing between this 10K and 20K, or even kind of below this 50s. And a lot of speakers tend to cut out, these, especially these lower frequencies. Now, over here, you have gain. Gain controls the volume of the input. So that means the volume of the sound that came in through our recording and it's measured in decibels. If I pull this all the way down, it will reduce the input by 24 decibels and it will sound like this. And if I pull all the way up, it will increase the input by 24 decibels and it will sound like this. Just a warning, this really sucks. So I'll give you three, two, one. So when I like to use EQ, especially on something like this, where I just have one solo track, or if I'm at the beginning of my mixing process, I always like to keep my gain around zero. Now up here, we have these four tabs. And on the sides, we have what are called the filters. So you can turn this one on by clicking it. And you can also turn these on and off by clicking them. Now on this side, we have what's called a low pass filter. So low pass filter cuts out the high frequencies and lets the low frequencies pass through. So you can see the frequencies are here, illustrated here. If you can't see these lines in your EQ and logic, you press this button, analyze your post, and they will come on or off. Now listen to what happens if I pull this all the way over here. You can see it's going to dampen these frequencies. And these are the overtones of the pitch that I'm playing. And it's going to dampen them by quite a lot. And then I want you to have a listen to what happens when I drag it across to the right. <laughs> So you can hear 
as I drag it to the right, more of those upper frequencies come through. And this is a very popular technique in a lot of dance music, especially EDM, where you get a piece that sat where that you have the low pass filter and it sweeps across because it kind of sounds like you're outside the club and you're coming into the club, the club that's playing I'd held and leave him by Britney Spears. Now on this side, you have the high pass filter and it's very similar, but it does the opposite effect. It cuts out all the lower frequencies by letting the high frequencies pass through. So let's have a listen and I'm going to sweep it across. So that gives us the opposite effect. Now, if I pull these up and down, let's have a listen. So if I pull this, it's around 500 Hertz. And this is what we call the kind of mid tones. It's going to pull these mid tones up I'll by a lot. Now, if I do the opposite and I pull all the way down, it's going to cut out these mid tones. So that to me sounds like I have a mute in my bell because I'm cutting out all those warm mid tones. Now, the first thing I want to teach you um, for EQ is how to use something called peak and sweep. So peak and sweep is a very helpful thing we can do to help get rid of any sort of unwanted whistle tones. Whistle tones are harmonics or overtones in the sound that kind of pop through and how many you have is going to depend on the mic you're recording with, the room you're recording in, and how many overtones and the kind of sound you make with your instrument. So to do that, we take this first blue one here and we bring it all the way up. Now, use our scroller down in this number and we put it all the way up to 100. So you can see it's nice and narrow. And then we're going to, when I press play, I'm going to start sweeping across this kind of region here. And you'll hear the whistle tones will pop out. It'll be quite audible. So let's have a listen. So there's some up here. Let's loop a little bit of this first. Yeah, so you can hear that. So you hear that tone's coming through. So what I do is to get rid of it, I drag this all the way down. And then I make it a little bit wider like that. So just a little bit. And this is going to dampen that whistle tone by about maybe three or four decibels. All right, down here, it says three decibels. All right, now I drag another one over and I do the same thing to find more whistle tones. So drag this all the way up, make this number down here 100, press play and start sweeping. So there's one there. Let's see if there's any more. So there's definitely one, always one for me around 2K, but there were also a couple over here. So I'm going to make this a little bit wider like that and just drag it over like this. There's definitely a strong one right there. All right. Let's do the same thing on another tab. So pull all the way up, make that 100, make it narrow and start sweeping. Right there. Right there. Right there. So there's a very strong one there. The same thing. There's a lot of kind of more quiet ones. I'm going to do that. Just kind of dampen all these out. Now I drag this last yellow tab and I do the same thing. Right there. All right. So I drag it down. Make it a little bit wider just to cut it out. All right. Now you can see we've kind of run out of these tabs. So what I'm going to do is because my recording has a lot of these whistle tones, I'm just going to add another EQ. You can do that by coming over here, 
pressing this panel and going to, it should be recent EQ. And if it's not there, it should be down here. And you want to do channel EQ. All right. So let's grab another one of these. Make it narrow. And we were kind of in this area. So let's press play. <laughs> Let's get rid of that one. And do the same thing with this one. Make it narrow. Start sweeping. Try to keep it around here. Yeah, that's a little bit more. All right, next one. Yeah, so there's definitely one right there. Cut that one out. And let's find one more. So there's another one right there. So let's cut that out. All right. So I'm going to play the whole thing now. And the first time through, I'm going to turn our EQ off. And then I'm going to play it again with the EQ back on so you can hear the difference. <laughs> And our EQ back on. All right, so it's a pretty subtle difference, but to me, it sounds a lot cleaner and a bit more accurate to what my ears are hearing because the microphone doesn't pick up 100% what the kind of sound that our ears hear. So by using this tool, it just sounds a little bit cleaner and a bit more accurate. All right, so now the next thing we can do with the EQ is to use EQ to help change the overall color and kind of tone of our recording. So I recorded on ribbon mics, which pick up a lot of mid-tones and make a very warm sound, which is great for brass. Because brass, we like to make a nice warm sound. And a condenser mic or dynamic mic can sometimes pick up those more higher frequencies, which make us sound a bit more shrill and a bit too bright. But I still want to add some brightness into my sound. So I can do that. I open up another EQ. And let's go over to this purple of the low filter. And let's see what happens if we pull all the way up. It's always good to when you're playing around with these things to bring things to the extreme and then cut them down. So let's listen to what happens if I bring this all the way up. So it definitely makes my sound brighter, but you kind of get a lot of these really high unwanted room noises and hiss sounds. And I definitely don't want that. So I'm going to turn this one on and I'm going to drag it over. So remember, human ears already have a hard time hearing these upper frequencies. And a lot of speakers, like phone speakers and computer laptop speakers, aren't really going to play them that much. So we don't really need them. It's always good to cut out what you don't need when it comes to EQ. So let's have a listen now. <laughs>
Yeah, so right here, because I have forte accent notes, I get a bit of brassiness and edge in my sound, and I want to bring that out a little bit more. So let's just loop that and see if we can use EQ to help make those accented forte notes a bit more shiny. All right, now let's see what happens without it. Now if I add the upper overtones back in. This sounds a lot shiny and brassier to me. Now, like I mentioned before, if we're coming to our mid-tones, my microphone already does a pretty good job of picking up these mid-tones. And in fact, if I also remember, there are a lot of kind of whistle tones around here. So I want to play around what it sounds like if I try to cut out this middle tone area a bit more. So that's a bit too much. because I sound a bit more brassy, especially in excerpts like this, which is all about energy and sounding heroic. I kind of like that brassy sound, so I'm going to cut out just a little bit of my midtones. Now, let's listen to what it sounds like if we pull up some of the lower tones. Now, in this excerpt, on the horn, we start on a concert E flat, or for horn, that's our pedal B flat. And let's hear what it sounds like, as is. So it's a pretty full sounding B flat. There's obviously still picking up a lot of those high overtones on the B flat. So even though it's a low note, it still sounds bright, but I want to add a bit more weight behind that B flat. So let's have a listen if I do that. Just pull this up all the way. So you can hear it definitely adds a lot more resonance to that low note, but I sound a bit too much like a tuba, so I don't want to do that much. Let's try to pull it a bit over here. All right, so to me, it sounds there's a lot more punch behind, a lot more weight behind that pedal B flat. All right, now with the low frequencies, again, like I mentioned before. A lot of speakers don't play these frequencies, especially your phone and your laptop. So I always like to cut them out because also I record in a room that's in a building with a lot of other musicians. And sometimes a lot of unwanted sound comes through. And since low frequencies are more likely to travel farther and longer, I get a lot more low frequencies coming into my room that I definitely don't want. So I always like to cut this out. And remember that human ear also has a hard time hearing these frequencies. And all I need, the lowest note I know is that B flat. So I don't really need to have anything below that come through. Remember, always cut out what you don't need. So it just sounds a little bit cleaner on the low end. You get less that kind of like low room noise. All right, so now let's have a listen again to what it sounds like with all our EQ, without all our EQ, and then I'll add the EQ back in. Again. 
All right, so you can hear it has a very different sound with all our EQ added back in. And again, how much, especially on this one, how much you're going to bring up mid tones, low tones, high tones, it's all up to your own personal choice. So for this excerpt, I wanted a sound that was a bit more brassy and a less more well, mellow and warm. So I didn't have, so I pulled out what I don't need and I added a little of what I want back in. Again, this is all personal choice. Now, if I want to save this EQ so I can use it next time, I open up down this panel here and I go save. Oops, nope, that's not it. Oops, no, 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 no. So I go save and then I can save it as Helden Orange EQ. And then, so next time I have this preset saved, I can just open up down here. Now, I do want to stress that if you do any sort of remote session work, I don't recommend adding EQ because you'll be sending your track off and you want to make it as raw and dry as possible because the person who you're sending it to will most likely have their own sound engineer who will want to do all this to help with the overall mix. But if you're doing something for your own personal project, I definitely recommend try to try using it to kind of improve the quality of your recording and to also help you get a recording that's closer to the sound that you want. All right, so that's that. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And let me know what other topics you like in the cover. I'm definitely going to do one on reverb and compression coming up. Um, and I hope you have found some useful information here and have fun recording. <laughs>